Water break-in. It's a divisive topic on YouTube. YouTube's been showing me a lot of these videos here lately. So I figured that it's time to reconsider it, especially since we have racing motors now. So let's talk about water break-in. It's a very divisive topic. First off, I'd like to say if you've got any suggestions or secrets from the old days of racing and breaking in a brush motor, in particular sealed cans, post them down below. There's a lot of different ways that people like to break in their motors, different materials they like to use or don't use. So let's hear them. I would love to hear them down in the comments. Now, let's start by talking about the Retro Sport motors. These are our sealed can race motors. We certainly can hand wind anything for you, but the hand winds are gonna be broken in, they're gonna be ready to go. And those you don't have to mess with. Whereas the sealed cans, they're not gonna be broken in. And the reason that we don't break these in is because we really don't know what you're gonna do with them. Breaking in a sealed can can take anywhere from 25% to 75% of the motor life away. Ideally, no more than 50%. But if you're just gonna throw this retro sport into something like, oh, an old Tamiya, an RC10, I don't wanna be sealing your runtime. This is something that can literally run for hundreds of miles if it's not abused. And if we break that in in-house, then we're taking away a lot of that. Our crawler motors, we've got plenty of guys that have logged well over 500 miles on a sealed can like this. And if we broke them in, we would be taking hundreds of miles of runtime literally from them. So we're not gonna do that in-house. However, if you are racing in particular, breaking in your sealed can is important for maximum performance. And that's really the crux of this issue. Do you want maximum service life of your motor or do you want maximum performance? And racing is really those maximum performance settings. Some of these racing guys may buy like four of these motors so that they can sort through them and find the best one. And then they give the other ones to their friends that they're racing with so that they know that they're faster than everybody else. Racers will go to some extreme lengths to get that little bitty edge. And that does include many different ways of breaking in. So if you're going to be racing with one of our sealed cans, the water break-in method is actually a good way to do it. Why is it a good way to do it? It doesn't take very long, as opposed to a dry break-in method. If you're going to do a dry break-in on one of these, it's going to be something like 3 volts for yeah, potentially 8 hours. It's a pretty hard brush compound, and the way that they're shaped, it's not going to come conformed to your commutator. And it's really hard to see in there but they, they don't come fully conformed. So our brush shape is gonna be something that's like a C, and then we have our commutator, which is nice and round, but that C is only pressing on the edges at first, and we want to make that commutator and that brush fit together. So back to what I was saying, a dry break-in, it may be something like eight hours at three volts, and then like an hour at six volts or something like that. Majority of y'all are gonna be running like a two cell LiPo in these racing classes, but that takes a really long time. You gotta be on it, and you're gonna be listening to that thing hum for a really long time. Then there is the wet break-in method. And of course, with the dry break-in method, there's unloaded, there's loaded, there's, there's so many little bitty things. And then after that, you may want to clean it out. Oh, y'all just tell me in the comments what y'all used to do back in the racing days, because I was never really a racer. Wet break-in though. So more than likely, depending on your water, it... You, you can put this in a glass of water. I would recommend distilled water. Technically, you don't, you don't want hard water deposits. You don't want anything in there. It's gonna be something like three volts for like 15, 30 minutes, and then you will do a little run at like seven volts for a minute, something like that. We wanna get a fully seated brush and the water prevents you from creating the patina. It gets all of that surface, just, uh, you know, it, it exchanges it really quickly. So the brush wears away really fast. Same for if you're driving in water, but if we're talking about racing today, you're probably not gonna be driving in water. If you do the water break-in though, you need to clean your motor back out. You need to get the water out and you need to re-lube your bushing and your bearing on here. And, and the bushing and bearing, technically, the bushing on the back is self-lubricating and the bearing, you're not gonna displace the oil that's inside, technically, but it, we're just talking best practices here. We're racing, we want maximum performance. So first thing, you gotta get all the water out. We'd recommend a WD-40 in the past. For a crawler, that's fine, that's fine enough. For racing, you want maximum power. 
I do not recommend brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is not a good idea. It will attack the plastics, but hey, you're only racing for a day before you throw the motor away. You don't care. You got brake cleaner on hand probably. I don't recommend it though. If you run it when any brake cleaner is still in that motor, the gases that will come out can give you the shakes. It, it's something that will damage your nervous system. So I don't recommend that. However, you got it on hand. You've done it before in the past, right? Not a big deal. I highly recommend that you use either CRC electric cleaner or the Moo Clean industrial grade electric cleaner and degreaser. Both of these will not harm your plastics. You will be able to get all of the water out of your motor and then you can look at going back to relube, right? So you let me know in the comments though what you like to use. You can use 99% ISO, isopropyl alcohol. You could even do the break-in in isopropyl alcohol. I would say you wanna use 99%. However, you may find that it catches on fire if you accidentally take it out while it's spinning and a spark flies, then you're gonna have problems potentially. So I would recommend the average person do it in water instead. So we've broken it in water. Now we have gotten all of our water out with some product that we have on hand right and then we want to re-lube. What I would highly recommend that you re-lube with is something like a 020 motor oil. Super cheap everywhere. You're going to get a quart of it. It's going to be way too much for lubing motors. We've been running the same quart here for like a decade and we rebuild motors all the time, almost daily for customers. And we still haven't gone through that court because you only need not even a full drop. Like you get a toothpick wet and you, you wipe it along the edge of the bearing and you wipe it along the edge of your bushing in the backside. You don't need much. Uh, but if you have a power supply with an amp draw meter on there, you can watch your amp draw and hopefully it goes down just that, that teeny little smidgen. So that's basically it. If you want to race with these motors, you want to break in your brushes fully for maximum performance. If you don't care about performance, then don't even worry about it. You're going to be having to replace your motor a lot quicker when you break in the brushes. So we're going to break them in for expediency. We would do it in water and maybe you have some suggestions for how long that it takes to do it in water. Every motor is going to be different. Every brush is going to be different, but my motors, it's going to be something like half of an hour potentially at three volts and then a little bit of faster speed. We want to make sure we bed those brushes in at the higher speed too. If you really want to be extra about it, you can break it in in reverse to try to get a little extra RPM in the forward direction. But I feel like that's more of an argument for the comments because again, everybody's got their own ideas on racing. After we break it in, in potentially water, we want to get all that water out with these products. And then we're going to re-lube the bearings and bushing on the back with a 020 motor oil. And if you got a 010 weight or a 030 weight, it really doesn't matter. It just needs to be thin. You could even use three in one oil. You could use sewing machine oil. And there's a lot of different things that you could use. Ooh, and you can even put some, 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 uh, some brush, uh, what was that stuff called? The, the calm drops on there if you really want. It's probably going to be a kerosene base. Maybe some of y'all know the secret sauces from back in the day. But that's a little further than what I want to talk about because that can actually cause more problems if you do it incorrectly or if you put too much on and it's going to wear your calm faster on top of that. But maybe you're only looking for about three races out of these motors and that changes everything about what you expect and what you can do to treat these motors nicely or abuse them to get that maximum power out. So there you go. To end it, I will say that these are really high quality sealed motors. So all in all, compared to most sealed cans, you may not even have to break them in to get better performance. These do have a ball bearing on the face, so you're not gonna be wearing that out first from your pinion. These do have a bushing on the back, but your brushes are gonna wear out way before that bushing on the back is. And with the high quality magnets that we have in here, along with our flux ring on it, they're just high performance motors and our new retro sports do have timing advance. We have forward and rear paired motors. If you have something like a clod buster or maybe some weird belt drive reverse rotation sort of rig. I, I don't know. I know that they're out there. I just don't know them personally because there's so many, so many RC cars in the world and it's hard to know them all. So you let me know in the comments what you're installing your retro sports into. I would love to hear it and learn a little bit about what you're doing and having some fun with these retro sports. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.